Diners coming to Minneapolis may think hamburgers, hot dogs, and fried walleye sandwiches. And well, that's not an accurate, it's absolutely not the whole story here. Chef Samawadi digs deep into his Palestinian roots to expand minds and excite palates. Chef Wadi's headquarters, Saffron, serves high-end Middle Eastern food, which makes it unique in Minneapolis. And when he opened it five years ago, at the age of 21, Wadi really kind of bucked the local finisher meatloaf mentality of dining and served very challenging dishes. Saffron's lamb brain appetizers often sell out, and its Greek asparagus salad is a deconstructed play on a classic dish. This restaurant for me is not for making money. This restaurant is truly about elevating the cuisine of the Middle East, the Mediterranean. Uh, most people associate the food with falafel and shawarma, but uh, we're trying to elevate it and bring it into a haute cuisine. One dish that epitomizes the conversation between modern gastronomy and traditional Arab cuisine is the torshaw of foie gras. Most people don't know foie gras actually originated in the Middle East. The ancient Egyptians used to feed their ducks, figs, and dates, and then they found out that actually enlarges the liver, and then it's also very delicious. The foie gras itself is cured with a little bit of uh, ras al hanout and a little bit of Pedro Jimenez, the sherry, as well as a little bit of uh, orange liqueur. We roll it in a little bit of almonds, and we lightly brulee it with some sugar. Uh, we're serving it with kind of a almond and a date birwat, which is a North African pastry uh, that is typically served as a dessert. And then as another accompaniment, we're doing a bitter orange jam and a bitter orange reduction. Now, it sounds like a by-the-numbers high-end dish, but here you've got this wonderful kick of ras al hanout, which gives depth of spice. And I really like the bitter orange flavor in this. You don't see it coming, and it's just this great complement to the richness of the foie gras and the sweetness of the date. While you might be tempted to describe this food as fusion, don't you dare. <laughs> I've kicked somebody out of here for saying fusion before. The word fusion is ridiculous. Uh, I try to stay true to the cuisine of my ancestors, and people were nomadic, and they were cooking according to what was around them, what was available, what was seasonal. And I'm doing just the same thing, I'm a nomad. What defines Middle Eastern cuisine is truly the spices, from both savory to earthy to spicy. When we started the restaurant, I started looking around for unique spice blends, uh, and everything seemed just a little bit diluted. And so we started grinding our spices in-house, and then we realized one day that people are, are looking for the same thing that I was looking for. So that forayed into us opening the market for Spice Trail. It was Chef Wadi's frustration with locally available spice blends that led him to start his spice business, but it was his constant gastronomic curiosity that led him to found his eclectic food truck, the World Street Kitchen. Whether it's Middle Eastern, Vietnamese, or Mexican food, I really, really love street food. And so when we came up to uh, open up World Street Kitchen, we wanted to have a place where we can have all nationalities in one area. The truck is also a way for me to get to play around with things and educate myself about cuisine that I'm not very familiar with. A veteran now at 26 years old, with a visit to Kitchen Stadium under his belt, Wadi uses spice in a deeply integrated way, fearlessly traverses geography, and doesn't mind dropping the occasional bombshell. His next move? Who knows? But it's likely to be gastronomically courageous and come from deep family roots.